Put your cards in there, shy. Put your card in there. Laugh. Switch. Yeah. Yeah. All right. As a reminder, make sure to silence your cell phones. Obviously, no flash photography and no live video. Streaming of today's press conference is a reminder. Coach will give an opening statement, and then we'll turn it over for questions for the student athletes only, um, and then we'll dismiss them and get back to Coach. Coach, could you give an opening statement at this time? Yeah, incredibly proud uh, of this group, and you continue just to see uh, the unselfishness, uh, the journey it's been all season. But I thought, you know, we started the, the game defensively. I, I thought we were, were really aggressive being able to force them into some turnovers. Uh, then Notre Dame kind of settled in and uh, had their way with us in, in that second quarter. Uh, Diamond and, and Shy took a, a little minute. They, they were taking a lot of the, the defensive presence uh, from them. But just being uh, the winners that they are, they trusted their teammates. They uh, regrouped in the second half. And I thought you saw those two really be aggressive to, to make plays, um, getting to the free throw line and, and getting to them in foul trouble. But can't say enough about Lav and Nay and Bree, uh, just the, the, the confidence and courage that this team played with for, for 40 minutes and is the reason why we're moving on to the Elite Eight. Questions only for student athletes, starting with one from Zoom. Samuel, go ahead. Hey, I was just asking for um, Lav. A um, couple corner threes there. It seems as if you guys really started to exploit the Maryland, or the Notre Dame zone. Um, what did you see from that uh, kind of allowing for you guys to get open, especially in the second half when it seems you started to adjust their length a little more? Um, well, first, I feel like they were kind of daring us to shoot. Um, they, were, they put a post player on me, and they weren't really up, so... I was just catching and shooting. My teammates were finding me. But then in the second half, um, I guess nothing really changed from the first half, just trying to stay aggressive. And yeah. Down here on the right. Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Um, this is both for Diamond and Shy. Uh, coming out of the halftime, um, what was said during the halftime? What, how did you want to approach it? Because you both kind of came out much more aggressive and, and really got it cooking in that third quarter. Um, I know personally for me, obviously, and yes, definitely shy. Uh, we started out very slow. It took us for real, for real, the second half for us to pick it up. But uh, at halftime, we just knew that it was 31 to 32. And after all that, we were only down one. Gave us a lot of confidence that we needed to really execute the game plan in the second half. Yeah, and I think um, just settling in, like Diamond said, um, attacking, um, playing three posts is kind of hard when you have pretty versatile guards. So just uh, using that against them. Here in the middle. This question's for Diamond. You know, you've had such an incredible career here at Maryland, but somehow it's hard to believe that this is your first Elite Eight and for everybody else on the team. Can you talk about what those emotions are, especially given, you know, that a lot of people were counting Maryland out at the beginning of the season? Yeah, actually, I was just talking to Rose about it, and this is the first time since 2015. So just to know that we're making history right now is, is amazing, and we're not done yet. We're really excited for whoever we play, and, yeah, it's kind of cool, you know? <laughs> All right, Grace. Athletic, this is, this is also for you, Diamond, sort of as a follow-up. Um, just with so much turnover this offseason, so many new faces, a lot of people might have wanted to jump ship. Just what's kept you at, at Maryland? Uh, just 
just understanding that basketball is basketball. And if I were to transfer, I would have played with a new group of girls. And if I stayed, I would have played with a new group of girls. So, you know, <laughs> when you look at it like that, I was like, I'm just going to stay and trust the process. And I'm so happy I did because I don't know what school I would have committed to, but will we be at the Elite Eight now? At the Elite Eight, I don't know. But here we are. Pete? Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. This is for Shy. Hey, uh, Maryland. Maryland's got a, a a a really big and you know excellent women's basketball history. What does it mean to you that you're now part of it and getting a team to the Elite Eight? I think it's just exciting. Um, I mean, obviously, it's fun to be a part of, um, but just doing it with uh, a great coaching staff and a great and great teammates is always the best part. So um, I'm just really appreciative. Andrew? Andrea Adelson, ESPN.com. For both Shy and Diamond, you guys either scored or assisted on almost all the points in the second half. What was it about the two of you playing off each other or what Notre Dame was doing defensively that allowed you to do that? I think we were just more aggressive. I mean, in the first half, they slowed us down. Uh, they did a great job by doing that. I mean, we had 31 points. That's not how we want to play, you know? So the fact that they were able to slow us down really affected, I don't know, personally for me, my game and maybe Shai's as well. But in the second half, when we started running and just sprinting the floor, I think that really helped us and it got us going into a pace that we like. Yeah, and I think just being more aggressive for me in the second half, trying to get more downhill. Um, I think we were settling a little bit too much in the first half with ju outside jumpers. So um, kind of just keeping that in mind. Right here in the middle. Candace Buckner, Washington Post for Shy and Diamond. Uh, you also had to play on the other end and guard their big. So if you could just describe just the, the physical and uh, the physicality that you had to face down there. Uh, the physicality was pretty brutal. I mean, Evo, Westbell, Kelly Watson, they're all really, really strong girls. So um, if we wanted to move on, we know we had to battle uh, really, really hard, and that's exactly what we did for 40 minutes. Yeah, we expected this. Um, we knew they had three bigs. So it was kind of coming with the territory. We knew we had to compete against their bigs, and we were prepared. Right here. <clears throat> Yeah, Mitchell Norvin with Baltimore Banner um, for Shy. Um, Notre Dame had 25 turnovers today. That's a season high for them. Um, is that just a matter of, like, effort and aggressiveness on, on y'all's part? Yeah, I think so. Um, we talk about making them feel our pressure, and with any team we want them to feel our pressure. So um, making them feel uncomfortable is kind of what we try to do, and that's exactly what we did. Um, we knew they were a little bit on their toes, mean on their heels without a point guard. So um, trying to really make them really uncomfortable, and that's – you know, we saw you saw that we we did that. Last question for the student athletes will come from Zoom. Damon, Damon, if you're going to mute yourself. Yes. Hey, Damon. Um, you struggled to score at your normal pace in the first half, but eventually got it going with 14 points in the second half. What do you attribute to your ability to stay composed in the game and you know finding your rhythm in the second half? Um. Yeah, I definitely think. Uh, I don't really have an answer. It's just trusting my abilities and stuff like that, but. Like I said, I'm missing way too many chippies at the um, at the rim, and I really got to – luckily we have practice tomorrow, so I get to really work on that, my finishing of the flick of the wrist. But, yeah, it's part of the process. You make baskets, you miss. It's basketball. We're going to dismiss our student athletes at this time. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> or, all, or all three, excuse me. We're going to open it up for question start here in the green shirt. The microphone. Maybe it's on. Yeah, it's on there now. we go. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> um, you know, just the, the the second and the third quarters. What kind of went wrong in the second that went so right in the third? I thought in in the second quarter we were settling too much within the rhythm of their zone and their man. They were sagging off of us, which kind of baited us into taking, you know, shots, pull-ups that I thought we could have gotten to the rim, be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, I thought our defense kind of let up a, a little bit. 
So, you know, the, a, a terrific response when you look at the box and 19 of the fouls drawn were between Shy Diamond and Bree. So I thought that aggressiveness that we needed to have from the three of them, Bree came in and didn't present like a freshman. She was really, really good. So uh, just a different mentality, I thought, in the third quarter. Down low. Hey, Brenda. Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Uh, you went with Brianne um, in the third quarter to start that third quarter, and Notre Dame was saying that kind of forced them to come out of their zone, and, and they weren't able to protect the paint as much. Was that... Was that your thinking? Was that your conscious decision to try to pull them out of the zone, or was it just kind of played out that way? Yeah, it was both. We knew the play calls they were running, unfortunately, with E, just a, a lot of things to be able to go get those mis mix mismatches with her, and we knew that from the first game and, and watching film with, with how they moved people around and playing three bigs. So strategically for us with, with Nay and that physicality made more sense. And then obviously, yeah, their, her ability to stretch the floor and, and shoot the ball is, 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 was really important. Pete? Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Uh, Brenda, does this run through the NCAA tournament feel any different for you than, uh, than, than maybe some of your other great runs that you've had? Yeah. Um, this one, for sure, is going to be one that uh, one we don't want to end. But when when you talk about this this journey and and you take it from a year ago uh, and and all the question marks coming in, losing eighty five percent of your offense to now sitting in an elite eight and just the hard work behind the scenes with with your staff and the players, the the trust and and the belief that that started last off season. So I was reflecting on it today, just a year, what, what I felt like a year ago and uh, to where we are today. And so, yeah, this one uh, is going to be one I'll, I'll remember for a really long time. We'll go Grace and then Andrea. Grace Rayner with The Athletic, sort of following up on Pete's question, just Diamond obviously touched on her decision to stay. Just what is her presence as a mainstay for you guys meant during this run? Just that loyalty piece and, and the trust. And I, I think you see as an example from, from Diamond when you do put your head down and you trust the process and you, you might even be unknown what, what that uncertainty looks like that, uh, you know, great things can, can occur. And obviously Diamond's so talented, she's going to impact any program she's a part of. But I think it's important to know the, the face of our program, the, the loyalty of those four years. Um, there's a handful of players sometimes when they come through your program, when you get those four years that you want to take to, to a final four, you want to take them as far as you can in the tournament. And that's where my heart is for diamond because she has been through so much in, in her four years. And, and so you just, you, you don't want it to end. Andrew. Andrea Adelson, ESPN.com. I'm also going to ask you a follow-up. Can you just take us to how you felt? a year ago and what those emotions <laughs> were. And then the second part of that is when you started to get a sense that you had something with this team that could get you to this point. Well, it was, it, it was uh, no surprise last year, both personally and professionally losing my dad. And, and it was a really hard year. It, it was a locker room uh, that was me uh, centered versus we centered. And uh, when we went into the, you know, had so many changes and, and portal is, is the new reality. Um, you can tell from my family, they, they uh, missed their mom, but their mom had to put her, her head down and go to work. And so the competitive side came, came out that we had a roster to fill when you're looking, um, you know, at a roster of eight players, it's daunting to, to have to fill the team. But um, what was your second question? The, when, uh, when did you get a sense? The, the, the sense was early when we, we beat Notre Dame and then we came back and we lost to Nebraska at home. We don't lose a, a lot at home and it was a conference game and a team we, we hadn't lost to before. But I started to see any time we didn't lose a lot this year, but every time we lost it dialed them in more. And their response off of losses were phenomenal to, to watch. And so that's when you kind of had that sense out of the Nebraska game, out of our Iowa game on the road, and then you'd come back and you'd have a dominating response. And so you started to understand, hey, we got something pretty special here. Right here in the middle. Uh, hi, and in response, uh, when I was talking to Faith in response to the question of, you know, obviously they want to make it to the Elite Eight, but how important it was it for them to do it for you, Coach B? She said that um, 
she had a conversation with you and told you that we're not getting stuck in Sweet 16. I just want to <laughs> confirm that. And uh, when did she? When did you guys have that, that chit-chat? Yeah, she did uh, when I took her off uh, the court at uh, Xfinity when we had the game one against Arizona to, to go to the Sweet 16. And, you know, again, I mean, that's your captain. That's another senior for us that – has had a journey coming back off of an ACL. So that's, you know, when you when you look at all these guys and their, their different stories that, that they have, that one with Faith is, is another one that has really stayed, stayed the course and, and trusted the process. So pretty, pretty important. Final two questions, We're starting right here. Yeah, I was just going to ask about Chai specifically. In that third quarter, she scored, I think, nine points, um, just seemed very in control of it and seemed like a veteran. Um, did, did you see the same thing out of her? What has made her so special during this run? Yeah. Um, yeah, she's so fun to, to coach and, and to challenge. And I can tell, I say, when she's in her bag or when she's in the, those moments, she, the, you know, hitting the, the out-of-bounds play off the back. Uh, we ran a play call, and, and she executed it through a clear side drive that I knew she, she understood what we were trying to go to without even having to, to, to tell her. So, yeah, I mean, she's just a winner. She, she wants to be great. And obviously, between her and, and Diamond, they, they set that tone for us, for, for our team to follow. Final question will come from Zoom. Andrew? Go ahead and unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Yeah, hey, Brenda. At the end of the game, you saw that you kind of took Lav and A aside and kind of spoke to them. You know, what, what was it like speaking to them as obviously transfers in their first year and making it to the Elite Eight, you know, a place where you, where you personally haven't been in, in eight years? Just really, really happy for those two. They came to Maryland because they, they for moments like this, I thought they – rose to the occasion they they thrived in it and just to share with them we're, we're not finished <laughs> we didn't come here just to to get to a lead eight and those two were, were really critical to, to our success thanks for your time coach thank you